big hello to you. So great to see you and I hope I find you well. Now today's video is just a short one. It's been inspired by the release of three new sound profiles plus the Android app for the HM7000 decoder series. And uh, certainly this is quite a welcome day. The Android app certainly is really opening up the market. Around 50% of the modelers out there have been waiting in anticipation for this. And as an added little uh, glistening of sugar on the top, there's three new sound profiles for Tornado. Also the double O version of the A4, both really, really useful. And the one that caught my eye is the Class 55 Deltic. Now, this is one that has never been offered in the previous TTS range, although it must be noted that the TXS range has nothing to do with the previous sound profiles. They're completely built up new from scratch. And it got me thinking, though, just how easy this would be to do a fully loaded install into one of the other brands of locomotives that are on the market. Of course, the Hornby Class 55 from the railroad range is due later on this year and certainly that's what this is designed for but how well does it slide inside some of the other class 55s that are on the market and the one that I had in mind is the DP1 uh, just sitting there behind me this was done for the National Railway Museum being released several times over made by Backman and certainly it's one which I think a great many people own and would really benefit from a budget sound upgrade and at half the RRP of other full fat sound decoders on the market the HM7000 decoder really does offer great value for money so will it fit can I get the power bank in as well how big a speaker enclosure can I get in there and do I have to do any modifications well come with me and I'll show you exactly how this install turned out and play through those class 55 sounds for you Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCT decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support comes from This is Clark Railworks and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at ClarkRailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo. I'm really excited about these new profiles that are coming out. I'm a firm believer in the HM7000 decoders. I think they offer great value for money and they've got a lot of features in them. In fact, more so than even some of the more expensive ones do. It also has to be said they're a lot easier to set up with that really great GUI that helps you through the CV settings. And you can do that on the fly using the app, which makes it really easy to see what effect you're having without having to transfer the locomotive backwards and forwards from a programming track, which is very easy to get lost. And I'd love to ask you if you would care to tickle that like button during the course of this video, if you enjoy the content and consider sharing it to social media and uh, get the word out there. And if you haven't already done so, do please consider subscribing to the channel and you can head on over to Patreon and help support the channel to keep making the videos that you want to see. We also have channel membership available too. And a big, big thank you to all of the absolute legends who have been supporting the channel in this way. But onwards with the video, let's check out this Class 55 install. <laughs> Hornby have promised that they're going to be bringing out a lot of new profiles over the coming months and true to that promise the most recent one to be released is the Class 55 sound file and this is one which has never been offered in the TTS range. It's new to Hornby 
they have a railroad class 55 model in the range and I believe that uh, there are a number of different versions of that that are forthcoming later this year but right now I want to see just how easy a fit this all is into a uh, DP1 this is the Backman DP1 that the National Railway Museum has produced a number of different versions of really successful model and at the moment my particular model only has a regular 21 pin DCC decoder in. So I've uh, borrowed the uh, 21 pin HM7000 decoder, a power bank and uh, the speaker which had already been put into the largest enclosure from my uh, O-gauge class 08 and uh, at some point I will buy another to go back into that class 08 but I was just really eager with the sound file being released yesterday to just see how easy it is to get it set up and just how good it will be in this particular model. Now I've already gone ahead and loosened all of the screws. Uh, there's quite a few on this. There's uh, four just at either end of the uh, fuel tanks underneath. And then we've got another two in each of the noses. And uh, once you've got all those off, it's quite easy to just uh, wriggle free the body. And this is the uh, uh, installation that greets us. Now, one of the first things which I've noticed is we've got a huge recess here, which I presume is for a uh, speaker. And taking our speaker here, I've got a feeling if we move those wires out of the way, that's going to be an absolutely perfect drop-in fit. Um, and at the other end, we've got plenty of room there where a power bank can hide away. So this looks at first glance to be a really quite straightforward installation. So I'm gonna go ahead and very carefully just uh, wobble free the existing decoder. We'll just carefully ease it one end, then the other, then back again until that comes free. And I'm gonna put that to one side. We can reuse that decoder in another locomotive in the future. It doesn't go to waste. And we've got the uh, HM7000TXS decoder here now. And that's going to be quite a straightforward drop-in. As we've already proven, the um, uh, HM7000 21-pin decoder is actually marginally smaller than a Locksound V5. So getting it to fit in any model is a, a doddle, in all honesty with you. Anybody who tells you that these don't fit is making it up. At this end... Let's start now. We're going to have to untangle all this wiring because what I want to do is just uh, make sure that this wiring is out of our way. Let's get rid of that piece of tape. I think that was just to hold the wiring quite neatly. And these screw holes, we can remove these if we need to. In fact, I'm just looking here and I have a feeling that um, it would just be prudent to nibble these off. They're not structural and they're really just there for ease of uh, users to secure the speaker enclosure. So it doesn't matter if you take these off, it's also not going to uh, do any mischief to the sound produced. And uh, I just use a pair of wire clippers here and uh, there you have it. I don't think we need to remove the end ones, uh, they're not important in the slightest. Now I'm going to, let's just see now, whereabouts the roof fans are. Now they may prove a bit of a nuisance. I don't know whether we've got a way through with those. I don't think it's gonna be an issue, but um, I was just seeing where we were up to with those. Now let's just see, can we get this to fit in? It would be an awful nuisance if it didn't quite fit. and. Uh, there's a wire just there. That wire is determined to get caught. There we go. There we go. And, oh, this is... I think it's going to have to go down absolutely straight. Uh, it's... Oh, my word. It is a perfect fit. Oh, my word. It's like this is... It must be a standard speaker enclosure size. I can't believe 
that Hornby looked at this model and went, let us make that enclosure to be a perfect fit. It's also actually a perfect fit into the Daypole Class 73 and Class 29. So I suspect that these are kind of like standard speaker enclosure sizes. Now that we've done that, uh, we can move some of this wiring back into place. And I, I'm gonna use some captain tape at some point just to neaten things up. Um, I'm gonna just make sure that this wire doesn't get uh, caught anywhere by just uh, feeding it under the decoder. And we're going to plug that in so it doesn't get forgotten about and so that we can neaten all the wiring up. So that's the speaker in place. And now that I'm happy that that, um, that speaker enclosure isn't coming out, it's a perfect, absolutely perfect fit. So it would be rude now to take that out. And I'm just going to get a little bit of the captain tape and... I'm going to use this just to make sure that all the wires are neatly in a position that they're not going to get caught on uh, anything. So let's just make sure that that goes across there like that. And that just holds everything down in place. That's perfect. And if we need to, right, let's just work out. We've got two screws come through there. Really important, don't let the screws chew through your wires, so you need to keep these clear. Moving back to the other end, I'm gonna take the power bank, and this, again, really easy fit. It's just simply a case of, I think we're gonna do it longitudinally, just to be on the safe side. And yeah, there's plenty of space there. So let's get this plugged in. So we've got pins away from the board, pins away from the board. Line it up and it's just an easy clunk click every trip. And for the uh, power bank itself, I'm just gonna slide it in there. And I'm gonna use a bit of the captain tape again. It's just to stop it moving around um, and it's this is, really more about making it convenient for us getting the uh, body back on more than anything else because it just holds the uh, piece where you want it just whilst you're fighting away with uh, trying to keep everything in one place so let's just uh, make sure that we can just get that down on there and that also holds these other wires which go to the LED lights. And then we've got um, a load of extra wire. I'd rather have too much than too little, so that's absolutely fine. And I'm just gonna tuck that in just underneath there. And again, another small bit of captain tape. Again, for the, just for convenience, keep the wires where we want them as we're putting the body on, because what we don't want is for them to slip and end up getting chewed in the screw holes. So we've got screw holes clear, screw holes clear. We've got the power bank, which is fighting us just a little bit there. So let's just, uh, that should be fine. So let's just double check. Decoder, perfect. Power bank, perfect. Speaker, more than perfect. I do, oh, the, uh, please, please, please let this body go back on. And then we we'll just very, very slowly feed that down. And this looks like it's, it's a little bit tight. I suspect the power bank is hard up against the uh, roof. That's fine. Speaker appears to have plenty of room. So now let's start screwing the body back on. Now we've already made sure that there's no wires in the way and this should help snug everything down. Uh, obviously you don't go uh, gung-ho and uh, strip the threads. If it's not going down, it means that something is just catching. So all you need to do is just reposition the wires again. Captain tape, really useful just to make sure that everything stays where you want it 
whilst just snugging everything down. I've gone ahead and loaded the Class 55 sound profile on this decoder. It went through straightforward, first time, no issues whatsoever. And uh, I have shown the full process in a previous video about the HM7000 decoder, so I'm not going to show it again in this one. But suffice to say that it was very straightforward, and I've got it all up and running. Now, for the purposes of filming, I'm going to have it running on DCC, and that just means that I can film it and use the handset at the same time, rather than having to get a second smartphone in. So what I'm going to do is set off the AFC, Automatic Function Control, and that is found on F28. And we're going to run through the uh, sound profiles and just shuffle it backwards and forwards a little bit. So that's run through the full F28 functions. There are other spot sounds, uh, but it's simply a case of random playing of these during the AFC profile. One thing I would say, though, is that it does feel like it lacks a little bit of the bass, and I don't know whether this is the sound profile or the speaker, but I do suspect that the speaker may be the limiting factor. And if you want to experience more bass, then you may want to consider a different speaker. Now, the 21-pin TXS decoder will output through the pins on the pin header for the speaker, so you don't actually need to plug a speaker directly to it. And this could be a route to upgrade the speaker and to get yourself just a little bit more bass. But overall, this is a great profile that has never been offered from Hornby before and does give an option for those who maybe are on a tighter budget to be able to fit sound to their locomotives for around half the price of what other major decoder manufacturers are charging. In addition, it does also give you that Bluetooth control, which for me has been a paradigm shift in DCC control. But overall, this is a great new offering from Hornby in the HM7000 range. Just as a test, I've tried putting the decoder into this locomotive, which is pre-fitted with a pretty beefy speaker. So um, I've got the microphone reasonably close, and uh, let's start her up.
It has to be said that the sound is better through the speaker, although I did have to turn the volume down quite significantly um, as the speaker does appear to be a little bit more powerful than the decoder is expecting. So with it turned down to around 27% of uh, maximum volume was what you heard there. And I uh, went through some of the sounds, the revving up and the uh, notching down of the engine. And I ran through some of the horn sounds as well. It's not as bassy as I would expect a Deltic to be. But it's definitely better and uh, it may well be a project for you to uh, replace the speaker with one of the many aftermarket ones to get the best out of this sound file. Well, I hope you found today's video informative and certainly, as you saw in that, it's like that speaker enclosure is made for this model. It just slides right in, plenty of space above it. You don't have to modify the model at all. And there's even room for the power bank at the other end so we can get a fully loaded install in this model really, really easily. And it's one of the easier models anyway to DCC fit. So this makes it extra special. So I was really quite pleased with how this turned out. My only criticism is that the sounds do seem to be a little bit lacking in bass. And I think that this is simply down to the supplied speaker. So as an easy upgrade, there's uh, plenty of scope to try changing the speaker for something like an earth mover if you really want to pump up the bass. But I'd love to hear from you in the comments section. What did you think about this sound profile and the installation into the DP1 from Backman? Is this something that you're gonna be contemplating undertaking? Or do you have other grand ideas for your Class 55 sound profile from the HM7000 range? Maybe you bought yourself one of the Acura scale Class 55s without sound in and are regretting not going for that full thrashing sound system. Well, this could be a budget way of really improving that. And it would actually be really interesting to hear what it sounds like playing out through that onboard earth mover speaker that is in there but please leave your comments down below and also whilst you're there do check out the merch store we've got all of the great designs that you know and love including billy's replacement speakers gronk it up terrier fest and a whole lot more but until next time this is me jenny Kirk, saying please like share and subscribe don't forget to check us out over on patreon or indeed you could also become a channel member and until next time, you take care. Happy modeling. Bye for now. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support is provided by This is Clark Railworks, and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains, and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at ClarkRailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon, but a special thanks go out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYM Arish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 Class, Ian Coulson, Alan Dickerson, Eddie Papair, Karen Nicol, Medwin Williams, Crossways Point Junction, 3B Rail, Jennifer Horton, Michael Rose, Trains with Nick, and Simon Snow. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.